To go to the moon and back would demand a much bigger spacecraft than Mercury, and one which would allow the Apollo astronauts a much greater degree of control, a spacecraft they could really fly. In fact, for three years, NASA had been flying to the edge of space in the X-15 rocket plane. And I think that really impressed NASA. NASA had been a uh, co-funder of that program with the Air Force. And uh, the NASA people loved it, and I think they loved the people that worked on it. The X-15 was built by a company called North American Aviation. They were very much in the aircraft business, and we felt that the Apollo had to be thought of as a flying machine with men flying it. And it was on that basis that we picked North American. But the engineers at North American soon realized that the Apollo spacecraft would be far more complex than anything they had built before. When you break it down by functions, by what you have to do step by step, then you see what you actually have to do. You needed a propulsion system. You need an environmental control system. Oxygen and water the food supply. You needed a heat shield. A parachute to bring them back to Earth. Human waste disposal. You had uh, shaving supplies, you had hygiene. A window to look out of. We also had to look out for micrometeorites. They had life preservers, they had a couple machetes. The command module was a, a little tiny house uh, for three people. North Americans started by building wooden mock-ups to get a feel for the layout of the new three-man spacecraft. Getting three people to live in that little house for 14 or 15 days uh, became a pretty difficult project. The engineers were faced with a dilemma. A spacecraft large enough to sustain three men all the way to the moon would be too big to safely return to Earth. If you put everything you need inside the command module itself, it becomes quite large and heavy. And when you plan to re-enter uh, back into the Earth's atmosphere, a large, heavy vehicle is not desirable. The heavier a spacecraft, the more energy it has when it hits the Earth's atmosphere, and therefore the more heat it will generate as it slows down. A fully laden Apollo spacecraft would simply burn up. But North American realized that not everything that went to the moon needed to come back to Earth. The answer was to split the Apollo spacecraft in two. So the solution to the problem wound up having essentially a two-module concept, the service module and the command module. The service module was like a trailer behind the command module, and it was attached to the command module during launch, stayed attached all the way through the trip to the moon on the way back, and just before re-entry, the, the uh, service module would be jettisoned. The service module would carry almost everything the crew would need to keep them alive for the duration of the mission. It has the propulsion system, it has the fuel cells for the power, it has the oxygen and hydrogen tanks that are the reactants for the fuel cells, and it's got, of course, the engine. With much of the weight of the spacecraft in the service module, the Apollo capsule would now be small and light enough to survive re-entry. But there wouldn't be much space for the three-man crew to live for 10 days. If you look at it very simply, it's about a six by six by six cube. That's what you're living in. During training, getting into and out of the command module was always a slow and difficult business. It didn't seem to matter at the time, but the consequences of this simple fact would bring America's race to the moon to a shocking halt. <laughs> 